Hello everyone, Harry here to talk about the star witness who comes to the grand jury today in Alvin Bragg's uh, investigation of Donald Trump for hush money payments. That of course is Michael Cohen. Uh, they they have waited until Monday today to bring him forward for a couple reasons. One, you want his uh, testimony to have the most impact, and two, you want to be sure you don't suborn perjury, but you want to be sure that there's uh, as con it's as consistent as possible with everything that came before, which is we're told six or seven witnesses. So you want to prepare him in a way that leaves the least room possible for any opening between or daylight between what he says and what others says, because he is the whole deal. The uh, cross examination of him, if there's a trial, will if there is a trial, will be the main event of the whole trial. And if he anything he says, he says Tuesday and someone else said Wednesday will be fodder for a vicious cross examination on the part of Trump's lawyers. There, you, I can already tell you what closing argument looks like, and it's don't believe Michael Cohen. All right. Let's um, first, it's a good time we, you know, talk about it a little, but uh, to, we should really review the bidding of what Michael Cohen says. And he's the guy who's from the start said it. He brought it to Congress. Um, okay, so we are near the uh, end of the election period. Uh, there has already been, by the way, a, a, uh, a woman who's come forward and said, uh, that she had an affair with Donald Trump and the National Enquirer, which is sort of uh, very cozy with Trump in the in the uh, person of David Pecker, the head of Enquirer, has what you call um, hunt and kill or they 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 take the story and and pay money for it and don't use it as a favor to Trump. All right, now here, and, and remember, we've had at this point Access Hollywood, other kinds of indications of sleazy doings by Trump. Now comes Stormy Daniels, uh, Stephanie Clifford, but Stormy Daniels is her stage name. She's a porn star, and she uh, alleges that, that she and Trump had an affair, and she wants herself to be paid off uh, or she's going to take it um, public. Now, interestingly, that's not against the law for her to take it public, and it's not against the law to pay her off. And the crimes uh, that are going to be charged are related to, but not, but not directly that conduct. So uh, here comes Mr. Fix It. He, along with Hope Hicks, who will figure in the case, but Michael Cohen, the attorney. And when uh, she comes forward, first they uh, there's conversation with good old David Pecker of the National Enquirer. But for this time, he doesn't want to uh, to pay her and then kill the story. He says, "You guys take care of it," and that that so it falls to Cohen, who says everything everything was coordinated with and with the knowledge of Donald Trump. He uh, negotiates out a deal with Stormy Daniels' um, attorney to pay her $130,000 to keep the, you know, straight out hush money, no pretense otherwise, to keep this under wraps, keeps Trump in the loop, Ho picks also. Uh, they, um, the, right after he pays that money, which I believe comes, another, this is a recent and somewhat, um, you know, disgusting detail. It comes from the family trust of, of Trump's, um, uh, you know, that, that's the, where the, the source of the money is. We'll, we'll find out if that, if that's true. But anyway, he gives her $130,000. She goes away, problem averted, except it isn't because now what, what do you do with this $130,000, uh, that he has forwarded to her. And remember, the initial stories when they come out is, oh, you'll have to talk to my attorney, Michael Cohen. That had nothing to do with me. You know, Cohen was making it seem as if he just did it uh, out of the goodness of his heart, had nothing to do with Trump, et cetera. All that, you know, a bald face uh, lie, as he later admits. Um, and uh, so he pays 130000 meaning he has to get paid back 130000 Here's where the crime comes in. 
uh, they, as Ann Cohen says, with um, the knowledge of Trump uh, and Alan Weisselberg, remember him, and possibly Hope Hicks, pay him the $130,000 back in installments that are designated as retainer payments to him as a lawyer. So that's a lie. Uh, they were not for legal services. They were, in fact, uh, it was, in fact, hush money. And even though the hush money is legal, they didn't they didn't um, put it on the books that way. So that's the lie of misreporting. And and to follow through briefly, that lie is a misdemeanor to misreporting come like that to you know something that's hush money. They instead listed as legal fees. But it becomes a felony if it's done in the service of another crime. Everyone's waiting to see the indictment to see what other crime Bragg intends to charge. But one strong possibility, the one that's been most mentioned to date, is a campaign finance um, violation with the notion being this $130,000 was because he's a candidate. He, it would be, have been a scandal that, that could have tubed his whole candidacy at the end. And so it's a donation to the, the campaign and it's not listed as such. And that's the extra crime. Trump at the time or since has said, no, 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 it was nothing to do with the campaign. I just wanted to spare Melania's feelings, which seems very far fetched given his long track record. Um, anyway, so that's the basic Michael Cohen story. He told it to Congress. He's been very open about it. And he and he uh, presumably is telling it as we speak to the grand jury. Now, he, of course, lied about it initially, and he has has been convicted of crimes uh, involving three years of sentencing come uh, out of this very episode. He's been convicted on the federal side of lying to Congress uh, about it initially. Uh, and and the the payment itself and the and the campaign problem. He pleaded guilty to them, but he's been convicted. Now that line to Congress is really you know sticks out there like uh, like a sore thumb because the question was back a year ago when Bragg decided to scuttle the case, and um, you know the question that has been really the the focus ever since is. What kind of witness would Cohen be? Can you build a whole case on his back? You know, you guys probably know by now it's not unusual to have uh, witnesses, even important ones with blemishes and warts and, and criminal records. But this is bad because it's so it so goes to veracity and you can really see uh, Trump's lawyers trying to have a field day with this conviction for lying to Congress. But we've seen, you know, he, he gives his testimony in Congress and pretty persuasively, you know, just is an open book, explains why he lies, says he's very sorry that he lied, uh, you know, etc. And so the argument will be, yes, he was lying before, but that's when he was still loyal to Trump. And he, you know, has obviously crossed uh, that river. Um, and that there's corroborating evidence, two kinds. Uh, some witnesses who were present for phone calls. I, that's what I think Hope Hicks was doing there. Maybe Kellyanne Conway. And of course, the paper record itself, uh, of, you know, the misidentification of the, the money and the like. But still, uh, his credibility is really at issue. And here is the, the big thing to know about. Uh, not for today, not for the indictment, but for Bragg's decision to that he can come forward and can make the case with uh, Cohen as his star witness. Uh, Cohen, at the and the very time when he's apologizing to Congress and saying, you know, I lied, but here's why I'm 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 sorry, etc. But you can believe me now. Testifies that all he ever wanted to be was the lawyer in the White House the role he had. And there is um, extensive evidence from other people suggesting that to the contrary, he was very interested in being, among other things, chief, chief of staff, and that he lobbied extensively for that job. So 
you can imagine the difficulty if that if that's true that it brings a trial. You get a kind of a you know mulligan uh, maybe on that first uh, set of lies, and then but now he's straightened up and and you know fly and and been candid, etc. Now saying he wasn't interested in uh, another job in the White House when he really was. Not the biggest lie in the world, and maybe not even a lie. I mean, it's just, you know, we'll see what the evidence is. But, you know, the uh, uh, we saw this most recently, I think, in the Murdoch trial down in, in South Carolina. You know, a jury might forgive one lie, but when they come forward and then think they're being lied to, as I think happened when Murdoch took the stand, then, they're, then they can be furious. So... The, the issue with Cohen is not just these initial lies, but arguably uh, a, a one that, he, that postdates his supposed um, conversion. So that's the big summary of what the grand jury is hearing evidentially wise, uh, but also what uh, they could hear at trial and what uh, Bragg and his very strong trial team is really zeroing in on strategizing. How we, how do we prove this case? Uh, understanding that after Cohen testifies, the centerpiece of the whole trial is going to be a really savage cross-examination where they try to make the jury completely disbelieve him. All right, so that's what that's what we have today, and it will be uh, once charges are filed the big event. One final point: there's a big gap between these two events. So um, I know everyone is focused on the immediate bringing of charges. It's just important to understand that just the way the criminal system works. Trump is going to have a right and he's going to avail himself of it and and abuse it if possible to delay things with different pretrial motions. You'll have to consider them and, uh, you know, those will have to be taken care of before a jury is actually impaneled. And this point about Cohen's credibility really comes, you know, the rubber hits the road on it. Um, OK, but so hopefully now we, we've got a sense of the main case, the main witness and the main potential weaknesses of that witness so we can follow more closely. And this is going to be big news, first ever indictment of a former uh, president. So we'll be following it really closely. Until then, talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video and other Talking Feds content, please take a second to like and subscribe. Talk to you later.